All right, good morning, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate it. And um, let me see if you are on, and you know, you well, this will be posted on uh, Facebook. I know a lot of people are dumping Facebook. I don't honestly dump Facebook if I didn't need it for <coughs> the animal company and for this. Um, so I don't go on it too much. But uh, be on Facebook and YouTube. We're looking into other avenues, uh, Gab and some other ways. Um, more conservative venues, I guess, to post. But we want to reach everybody, so we'll just keep doing it. Uh, I know some churches have been, uh, their uh, YouTube accounts have been completely deleted, just disappeared. I know there was a conference Joseph Z was at, and they were trying to stream that live, and uh, that didn't happen. And after they put it up, they still wouldn't allow it on. So I know, you know, the devil can do whatever he wants, because, you know, um, in the end, the, the devil's a loser, because look at him and look at us, right? I mean, he's... Um, so we're, we're all good. We know how the story ends. But we want to walk in victory here on earth. And God has really been speaking to me about bringing it back to the basics. So this today is going to be very fundamental for a lot of people. It's going to be very, you're going to be like, oh, come on, where's the, where's the good stuff? I know all this stuff. But sometimes you have to get back to the foundation. And this is going to go on for, you know, I, you know I don't plan talking points. I don't plan, nothing, nothing wrong with that, but I don't plan how many weeks I'm going to talk. I just... The uh, Holy Spirit speaks to me, I make some notes, I speak to you, and then when he tells me to shut up and do something else, I shut up and do something else. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's my wife telling me to shut up. Someone's telling me to shut up and do something, I'm listening. So, um, we talk a lot about the Holy Spirit in this church, and um, we need to because the Holy Spirit is so uh, misunderstood. Uh, this is not a complete teaching. I recommend that you find some good sources to go online and, and, and further your studies. But if you think about the Holy Spirit, how little the Holy Spirit is mentioned, and the Holy Spirit is, in fact, God. So today, all I want to do is establish who the Holy Spirit is, not his ministry, not what he's going to do, not how we're operating the power and the gifts. All that is true. We're going to get to that. But just who he is. And um, I was reading this this morning, actually, uh, for two seconds, and I was just reading um, Acts 14, and the Apostle Paul um, had just um, healed somebody, him and uh, Barnabas, and I think they're in Athens, and they're walking through, and there's a, there's a cripple, been, been crippled his whole life, and Paul, in the name of Jesus, heals this man, and um, now the whole town is like, you are gods, you know, and they're calling uh, Paul and Barnabas gods, and Paul literally says, the way it translates up, we are just weak humans. We are just weak men. We are not gods. And of course, they're like, yes, you are gods. Then of course, later on, if you keep reading, the people said, okay, you're not gods. Now we're going to stone you to death, right? So people are fickle. They you know, can't, get your, can't get your identity through people because one day they love you and you're God. Next day, they hate you and they're throwing rocks at you, right? Um, so that's why we need to get our identity in Christ. But so... I was just thinking of that. It, you know, we're not supposed to have any other gods before us. But we talk a lot about God, you know, and we talk a lot about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit seems to almost be treated like a second-class citizen. And I know some people will get mad at me. I just can't seem to preach without anyone get, someone not getting mad at me. And I'm not... When you see, like, um, you know, uh, St. Mary, Church of St. Mary, Church of St. Mark, and, and, you know, Jane, you see all these different, um, and, you know... People in the Bible, apostles, and of course the mother, you know, the woman who carried Jesus, you know, very important people. But the Bible, you know, is very clear that we're not to worship them. So to set up whole churches, and I know they do a lot of good, they do a lot of charitable, and I'm not taking away what they do, but remember the devil is very subtle, and I'm not calling them demonic, so just hear my heart. It's just, it can take your focus off who we're supposed to focus on. And we're not supposed to focus on Mary, even though she's the mother of Jesus, we're not supposed to focus there. We're not supposed to pick an apostle and have, you know, St. Mark's, you know, or St. Paul. Paul himself said, do not do this, right? Um, so when you see all those things, sometimes it makes me wonder, do the people not read the scripture? You know, maybe their hearts are right, but where do they kind of go off? And you don't really see... Uh, you see the Church of Christ, you see, you know, uh, Church of God, and things, but you don't really see too much about the Holy Spirit. And the, the Holy Spirit, nothing gets done. This is his time. You know, Friday night with some friends, and my, our friend uh, Don and everything, always, Don always says something in passing, very casual, that the Holy Spirit says, don't forget that. And it's nothing to Don. Like she's not, yeah, I gotta speak into your life, I have this word. We're just talking, we're just, we're just like basically making fun of each other, having a good time. 
um, you know, eventually getting into worship and stuff. And um, she just said, you know, we're just talking with the Holy Spirit. She was, you know, the Holy Spirit, this is his time. And um, I could just tell it was a word from God coming through Don, you know, and casual to her, but powerful to, to me. And so just remember, this is the Holy Spirit's time. We literally cannot do life the way we're supposed to do it without the Holy Spirit. Um, so just this is a simple teaching. And as we begin to study the Holy Spirit, let's remember, you know, there's a lot of confusion around the Holy Spirit. If you go online and study, you get camps that are way one side, way the other, some in the middle, and then all these little mini camps that break out, and uh, there's a lot of confusion. And in 1 Corinthians uh, 14, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So God is not the author of confusion. I think that's my fastest rabbit trail I've ever come as I was writing. Like, that has nothing to do with your subject, but um, I digress. Um, so just remember, when you feel confusion, you should be asking the Holy Spirit for clarity. You know, don't buy into the confusion. Just because there's a lot of confusion in, in the church doesn't mean that it's God's doing. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the church that's not of God. Um, the Holy Spirit... Uh, has been described as a force. You know, I saw one meme where he's described almost like uh, Star Wars, the force. And I'm like, cute and funny, but <laughs> I've actually never made it all the way through a Star Wars movie, so I can't, but I can't speak into Star Wars too much because, like, that looks like it's going to be long. Can I just fast forward to the end and watch a good fight and see who wins, right? Um, so, I have a short attention span. I really do. Except for Godzilla. Godzilla is a whole different <laughs> monster, okay? Let's talk. <laughs> so, in life is full of dilemmas. Who are we going to root for, right? The Godzilla or King Kong? We grew up with my generation, King King creature Kong. double feature. It's like they're both your heroes. They're not your gods. <laughs> they're Godzilla small G, right? Uh, but they are, your, you know, they are pretty cool. So that's going to be a tough battle to watch. Um, but I will watch. Um, so he's described as a force, he's described as a feeling, in some uh, manifestation. You see manifestations of people because of the power of the Holy Spirit, but that's not the Holy Spirit. So if you go get slain in the Spirit, that's the power, that's your reaction to the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, people dance, we've seen people kick shoes, we've seen some stuff that's Probably all Holy Spirit, just super powerful. We've seen some stuff that's probably all goofy people just going, look at me, uh, have the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, but we know we've seen people break out in laughter, and I know good people like, uh, what is it, uh, Greg Moore, you know, come from a Baptist background, and him and his wife, they were going through some very tough times, and the Holy Spirit hit them with the power of laughter. There's an elderly, you know, elderly, Baptist, very strict, no spirit, hit with the, the laughter and joy of the Holy Spirit because that's what they needed. And we, we've seen that, where all of a sudden people break out in laughter because they're filled with such sorrow. And the Holy Spirit, you know, says the only way I can make you feel better is by hitting you with this laughter. But you have to be open to it. If you don't want it, you know, uh, he's not going to give it to you. Um, I can remember being at church services and, you know, uh, people are falling out in the Spirit and I'm like, not me. First time I was at a big conference and people were falling out the spirit. I had to go to the bathroom. I had to pee so bad. Like the conference went on for hours and I'm like, I am not going to fall out in the spirit and pee my pants. <laughs> so, so, so the Holy Spirit, I'm like, that's just not good. It'd be remember, it'd be, you know, I'd remember the experience, but for the wrong reasons. Uh, so, so when they put, they have cloths they put on you, not like diapers, right? So, I was just, uh, so he, won't, he won't go against your will. That's true. I was at Andrew's conference, and I'm like, I am not going out because the bathroom is like way the other way. Um, so, you know, he's been called a feel. When you see manifestations of the Holy Spirit, that is that person's, you know, how it is affecting that particular person. So don't, that is not actually the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's Holy Spirit inside creating, helping create that, but it's that person's expression of it. Um, a force of a lesser God, uh, treated as an afterthought. Uh, called an it, I really bothers me when I'm researching the Holy Spirit and during, you know, just, you know, God will give me the subject and it comes up in my reading and I'll, you know, do some research and stuff and uh, so many times the Holy Spirit's called an it. You know, we're not praying to an it, an it is not releasing us from anything, okay? So the Holy Spirit uh, is a person. What? 
A male? Yeah. But uh, first and foremost, he is God. So Holy Spirit is God, just as Jesus is God, just as God is God. He's not a lesser God. He's not like, you know, hey, Jesus, let's take our little brother, the Holy Spirit, with us, you know. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is the helper, so he does a lot of things, but he's not like the, the younger sibling in the house that has to wait and do everyone, you know, do everything for everyone. Be like, I, Giovanna would be our Holy Spirit, uh, right? Uh, but he's not like that. He's as, he's as equal just as powerful as, as God, as Jesus. It's a hard concept, the Trinity, and I don't want to go into the whole teaching of it, um, but it is one God. We worship one God, um, but also as, as three individuals. It's very complex, and when I prayed about it, I'm like, God, I can't explain this. I can't find anyone else that can explain it well, and I really felt the Holy Spirit says, that's where faith comes in. You know, we're not going to understand everything. Sometimes, you know, like the little kids, you, you try to give your children rules to follow, and you think that a two-year-old has to understand every every reason why uh, they can't sit on a stove or whatever. Like, you have to go through everything and, ex and explain it's never going to happen. Sometimes you just have to look at people, uh, employees or friends or children, and you just have to say, um, this, you're just going, this is just the way it is, and you're not ready, you're not, you, you can't understand the full explanation of why it's this way. Um, C.S. Lewis, um, he said, this could be a very hard concept, and C.S. Lewis said it like this, God is a three-dimensional figure in our one-dimensional world. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a pretty simple way to put it that wouldn't take me all day to explain. So a three-dimensional uh, figure in a one-dimensional world. Genesis uh, chapter 1, my wife always gets nervous when I go to Genesis 1 because she thinks I'm just going to teach on creation and the whole, just a little bit. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. This is the New Living Translation. And I left in the headline, uh, it says, The Account of Creation. And I left that in there just because it's so important that we understand that from the beginning of creation, there's the Holy Spirit. Not as an afterthought. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and the darkness covered the waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Uh, I heard some, one person say, you know, God is kind of like uh, the design of the Creator, and then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in and completes it, you know? And I said, you know, reading through the scripture, that's pretty accurate. Um, Genesis 1.26, Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. I need to read that scripture to my animals here. I'm the boss, right? So, uh, again, it's so easy. And a monkey this big last night, you know, want to mess with me. And, um, so God said, let us make human, human beings. I mean, who's God talking to? He's talking to uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So this shows from the very beginning of creation, nothing happened without the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit's involvement. Um, I look at it like, you know, the Holy Spirit, he just... He's there, God's you know, designing, dreaming, you know, uh, Jesus is there, nothing was created that wasn't created through Jesus, he's you know, been des described as like, you know, uh, the, ex you know, the executor, the general, many different ways, um, and I look, the Holy Spirit, he's there, he's God, he's involved, and he's just, you know, waiting, okay, is now my chance to jump into action and, you know, do something. So his spirit is hovering over water, and then you see the great thing, all the things that were brought forth. Um, Genesis 2, 7, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. When you study the word Holy Spirit uh, out in the original language, it uh, means helper and comforter, and it means uh, breath. Like spirit is described as wind or, or breath, and uh, Holy Spirit, uh, uh, paraclete, I believe, is the, is the Greek and um, it says comforter and helper. So here is, uh, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. So God again creating, and the Holy Spirit brings life. So the Holy Spirit uh, is crucial. He's a person, uh, the bringer of life, and we cannot ignore the Holy Spirit and expect to walk in the power. The next at least week or so, like I said, I don't know how long it'll go, on this subject, but we're going to learn more and more um, the power 
and the role of the Holy Spirit and how that we need to really fellowship, invite the Holy Spirit in, be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Remember, this church, every church should not be a church that just has one person, blah, blah, Amen. right? We should all, we all have a voice. If God gives you a word, you come up, push me out of the way, or say, excuse me, whatever you want to <laughs> uh, and, and, and give the word, you know? This is an interactive, this, God put in my heart a small interactive <laughs> church where all, we all have a voice. And uh, when people come in, if they walk in, like a few weeks ago, somebody came in with crutches, and we prayed, and they left without their crutches, right? Yeah. Then that's, that's normal Christianity. Uh, people should be um, healed at a very high rate. People should be receiving. And that's all to do with the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit is a person. So he's God, fully God, and he's a person. Uh, Isaiah 63.10 says, But they rebelled against him and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and fought against them. Later on, they all make up and it all works out. But for that moment, you know, it, when it says fought against them, it's very similar to, um, you know, somebody going to do something stupid. Uh, probably a lot of us, unfortunately, have been around that person who's got the car keys and they shouldn't be driving and they're insisting they can drive, right? And, of course, you're not going to support that, you know. Um, you know, I, I've been sober 23 years, quit drinking 23 years ago. And so pre that, though, I'm sure people around me, vaguely, probably remember some people suggesting that, you know, I shouldn't try, right? And so uh, the Holy Spirit's not going to get on board and go, let's go be stupid together. He's going to fight against your stupid, right, and guide you to do the right thing, you know. Give up the keys, go to bed, right? Uh, you've already lost this argument. Just shut up and move on, right? We're going to fight another day. So that's what it says, fight against you. Because they were rebelling against... So if you're rebelling against the Holy Spirit, if you're going the opposite way of God, you're not right. You, know, you can't... If you're going one way and God's going another, you've got to turn and go the way God's going. In the scripture I love in uh, Proverbs, I believe it's Proverbs, it just says, God is is behind you and is in front of you, you know? So he's pushing you along and he's leading you at the same time. Um, Ephesians 4.30 says, because I like to use scripture for all the New Testament, Ephesians 4.30 says, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing you that you will be saved in the day of redemption. <clears throat> so we are God's own. Uh, the Holy Spirit identifies us. Um, so let's just look at some human, at human attributes he has. He can be rebelled against, right? And uh, he can be, um, and he, again, he won't go against our will. So uh, he can be grieved, he, he can be saddened, he can be angry. These are all things that humans experience. We've all had people rebel against us, right? We've had, uh, we've been angry, we've been sad, we've been grieved. Uh, these are all things that humans experience. And God, you know, the Holy Spirit ex experiences all of those things as well. Uh, First Thess Thessalonians 5.19, it says, do not quench the spirit. And uh, I don't know who quoted this. Um, I was just reading, doing some research, and, and uh, this statement popped up somewhere. So it's not my own original thought, but I don't know whose it is. It says, quenching is what we do to stop the movement of the Holy Spirit. Grieving is how he responds to our action. And it just spoke to me, so I wrote down. Quenching is what we do to stop the movement of the Holy Spirit. Grieving is how he responds to our action. So the Holy Spirit is moving, right? It's, as you know, we're in a service. People are coming up, and we've talked about this before. People come up, and just a lot of people get receiving the healings or whatever it is, and we're move, we're moving, and then you do something that you know uh, quenches it, and you uh, you stop the movement. That's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. If you're if you have a line of 500 people that are all going to that all need healing and all going to receive it. And then you stop the movement at 100 people. The Holy Spirit's going to be sad because it's like, oh, come on, man. We're, we've got a whole line of people that need, a, <clears throat> that need us right now. So uh, not mad at you. Just, you know, it's like when, when people around you, you can get disappointed. But, you know, it doesn't mean you don't love them, you know. Um, especially when, <clears throat> when you're on someone's side, you know, and you really want to see them do well. And you see them, you know, go the opposite way. It can, it can sadden you and grieve you a little bit. Um, First um, Corinthians uh, tw twelve verse eleven says, 
It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So the Holy Spirit distributes our gift, but even I think bigger than that, he decides. God doesn't say, go and see what their gifts are, then report to me and I'll go tell you what to do. So he's not a second class God. He's not a second class citizen. He says the Holy Spirit himself decides who distributes the gifts, which is pretty cool. Um, and I don't know what happened, but let's keep going. Um, John 14, 26, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and, and remind you of everything I have told you. So that's really important because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. We read the Bible, and I've told people here before, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit in 2008. Before 2008, I just read the Bible like I read any other book. And it was frustrating, and um, it didn't make sense to me a lot of it. I could not really comprehend it, and I, and I was not walking in uh, the power. I mean, obviously I have a ways to go, but I'm doing much better today than I was at the, in the beginning. And, and uh, the Holy Spirit teaches you. He, so he will teach you. Yes, Don. Do you think that you just, like I went through that as well, weren't ready to receive? Like, I was reading the Bible, but it wasn't speaking to me. But when I, the Holy Spirit, when I was ready, all of a sudden, it started to make sense. Yeah, my issue, the only reason why I did not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because nobody ever taught me about it. I was in church since 1999 or whatever, uh, uh, even before that, but I, no one ever taught me. Same. I went to church, and I listened, and um, no one really spoke to me about it. And it was where, at the same time, I was talking with uh, Pastor Chad from Metro Church, and he was talking to me a lot about the book of Acts. We were just, you know, hanging out, having coffee, and just talking, and then... I ended up at an Andrew Womack conference, like within, you know, I, and I, I was like, I was a creationist from, you know, science type background, so I was like, thought I was like, I understand it all, <clears throat> I can, I can win it, win any debate in the world, I've got it, and then when I started studying the book of Acts, I'm like, why have I not been told this, I have nothing, like I was literally angry when I started reading the book of Acts, and then when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, everything just came alive. Like things that, you know, I'd be reading, and I, and I mentioned this probably every week why it takes me years to do my year in the Bible, is because <clears throat> before I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I could get through the Bible in less than a year, I guarantee it. Post being baptized in the Holy Spirit, because he just has too much to say, too much to teach me, too many things to say. Don't worry about getting through the next chapter. We have work in teaching and instruction that's going to benefit you and the people around you right now. So, um, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, Him teaching you is amazing, and then reminding you. Um, and people think, you know, I think that I'm not, this is fine. If you lose your car keys, you can ask the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I ask my wife this because I get a quick, a faster answer. You know, <laughs> Giovanna in our house is, is called the finder of all things. When we lose something, right? So you, so you know. Um, the Holy Spirit, I'm going to get quiet, I'm going to hear His voice. My wife and my younger son, I go, where do I leave my stuff? And they come up with it for me. So you don't, you know. But, um, the Holy Spirit will help you remember, you know, where you put things and little things like that. But I'm thinking of the time where Jesus is telling the disciples, I've been with you for three years. You've seen me walk on water, calm storms, raise. You've seen me do everything. And every time you lost your, your faith, didn't activate your faith, whatever you want to put it, uh, you know, or uh, got sidetracked, I was there to bail you up. Me, personally, I was there. We had a bunch of hungry people. You knew you could have Bless the food. You could have fed everybody without me, but you looked to me. You failed. I failed you out. Now, Jesus telling them, you know, this person that you think is invincible, I am. But for you, I am now going to go to the cross, right? You're going to see me be spit on. You're going to see me be beaten to a point where I'm not recognized. You're going to see me tortured, abused, made fun of, and mocked. And this is all going to happen, and you're going to want to crumble. But in three days, I'll be back, right? And I will send you the Holy Spirit, right? So when bad things happen, the disciples, they needed to have the Holy Spirit help them remember and recall things. And then, you know, they're walking, they're walking with Jesus, you know, uh, and they don't even recognize him. And then the Holy Spirit, you know, shows them who it is. So the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance, he'll teach you, and it's so, it's so important. Because um, when we're struggling, 
in life and you're struggling with the healing or finances, because we're still here and we're still battling and we're now in the struggle, I'll guarantee you, you're in the struggle, but you've already had victory over another one. So when we used to do Bible study here, we had a big uh, you know, paper, I still have it all rolled up, where people would come in and write their, their victory reports. And we'd unroll it like a scroll and, and read off people's uh, you know, things that they came through. And so when you're struggling, oh, I'm not going to receive this healing, the Holy Spirit will, can remind you, oh, but you got healed of this, so why would not, why not bring you through this? When you say, I can't pay my bills, and the Holy Spirit, I think he just goes, how many times have you said this to me? You know, maybe you should watch your words, and instead of, now that I've supernaturally helped you get out of this crisis, why go back? Why not just keep moving forward, you know? Um, so he'll remind you of your victories. It's so important. If we, if we don't remind ourselves that we have, a help, have the Holy Spirit remind us of our victories, we're going to sit there and have a pity party. And there's no scripture in the Bible for a pity party, you know? It is. Um, so we, you, have, you have to just move on. Nehemiah 9.20. You sent your good spirit to instruct them, and you did not stop giving them uh, the manna from heaven or water from, uh, for thirst. So Nehemiah, you know, God spent his good spirit, the Holy Spirit, to instruct Nehemiah, and he kept, God kept supplying them uh, food and water. So he'll instruct us, and he'll uh, supply all our needs. Romans 8, 26 and 27, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, <clears throat> the Father who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. That is so important because people get really freaked out, really nervous, and they get uh, frazzled and they can't put words together to pray. I don't know if you've ever been so desperate in prayer that you just can't slow your mind down and uh, you just can't get the right words. And, and sometimes it's like, oh, if I don't pray right, it's not going to happen, you know? And that's where, A, that's not true because God knows our heart and, you know, he can disciple through our gibberish and go right to the heart. Um, and, but the Holy Spirit prays for us and he prays the perfect will of God. So when you pray, um, you can ask, you can achieve this, I believe, without praying in tongues. I do believe praying in tongues is, the, you know, the most powerful, you know, least used tool that we have. When I don't know what to do and I don't know how to make decisions and I need to hear from God, I pray in tongues. I pray in tongues every single day. There's not a day that goes by where I don't pray in the Spirit. Um, it's just part of, I don't think about it, I just, sometimes I just do it. I might be in the car, singing a song, and next thing you know, I'm singing in the Spirit, you know, or in the shower, and praying, <laughs> just throughout the day. Uh, and the Holy Spirit, that's usually what he, he speaks to me and, and gives me uh, words for, for, to bless other people, um, or things I need to, that'll help myself as well. Um, so, when you don't know what to pray, and if you don't pray in the Spirit, I really recommend you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. And we can baptize you in the Holy Spirit. You can you don't need uh, a pastor or anyone to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. We're happy to, because some people just need that that teaching, that encouragement, and uh, surround you and pray with you and pray in tongues with you, and uh, so you help you receive. And we do that all the time, and we're happy to do that. But we know people that have been in the shower. You know, next thing you know, they're praying in tongues. You know, I mean, you can do it all on your own. You don't need someone to lay hands on you, but we're more than happy to help you. Sometimes it just helps people, uh, you know, to have people lay hands and pray with you and answer. What's that? Oh, the books. Oh, the books? What about it? Oh, well, yeah, I'll get to them. Now well, I can get to them. Well, I mean, you're talking about it. So oh, so you're doing that? You can, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. I'm slow. <laughs> I'm slow. Holy Spirit, what did she say? Oh, the book? No, so, uh, books by the Terradez uh, Ministries, and they're an amazing couple. You should follow the Terradez Ministries on YouTube and Facebook and go to their website. They have a lot of free resources. Uh, 39 Reasons Your Healing is Yours. These are all free. And Your Life with God and the Holy Spirit. These are just short little booklets that will give you oh, if you that, want. That one book is this, about the this, baptism. This one, this one book here is about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, that's why you have to sit in the front seat. Right? That's why you can't stay in the back. Uh, so we have those for free. We just bought another like whole case of them, right? Yeah. So we have plenty to give out. And we also have Andrew Womack's book too. And we have a few copies left. We have to order more of those. Yeah. Andrew's Womack book called The New You and the Holy Spirit. That's a thicker book, very good. All very simple teachings and they're all free for you. Um, so if you want them, you, you can have them. Um, just as far as you know, the Holy Spirit, when you're not sure what to pray, just a quick example. I'm going to finish. I'm going to have one more scripture because I just wanted to lay the foundation that the Holy Spirit is God, right? Not a lesser God, fully God, and that He is not just this thing floating around. You know, He's a real uh, person. But uh, Friday night, we had a couple of friends over, uh, Don Everett, Matt Namey, the little boy, uh, James, and uh, we're just doing... It's really fun. Just to show you, you don't need fancy things. I'm not against fancy things, but you don't need them. Matt is a really good worship leader. He leads a big church, multiple services uh, in New Hampshire. They have nice equipment, and he didn't bring his guitar, so I said, we'll just do um, YouTube. And then uh, a friend of mine gave me a first axe guitar and an amp. Like, he paid $40 for the guitar and the amp. And I just joke with Matt, that, with Matt I go, I have a first axe guitar. That's, that's in the house, he goes, grab it, right? So, there's Matt, I have pictures of it. Uh, there's Matt, sets up this $40 guitar and amp, and that was for both, the cost for both of them, and he just sits in our living room, and, um, you know, and we just, he just starts playing and singing, and uh, we're worshiping in the Spirit, and, um, you know, I ask the Holy Spirit, how can I pray for these people? What, what do you have, who needs what here, right? And the Holy Spirit starts giving me a, a flash of, their family. And um, I'm like, all right, I'm a little bit slow, I guess, when it comes to just being obedient, you know? So I'm like, all right, I'm always like, all right, Holy Spirit, I don't want my flesh to do anything. I want to make sure it's you. Keep showing me and showing me and showing me. And then I hear him go, just speak it. And then I go, okay. So I start speaking this uh, prophetic word that God has given me for the family. And as I go to speak it, the Holy Spirit hits me so. He's like, you want proof that I'm here? Hits me so powerfully, now I can't even speak. Like, I'm like, and people know I did not grow up in a generation where tears were, I never cried in my house as a child. If I did cry, I would have got the snot kicked out of me for being a baby, a wimp, a sissy, many other words that I probably won't use. But just, you know, I just, it was not acceptable. You know, whether you were uh, five years old or 25 years old, you just never cried. I, I remember being five years old and wanting to cry and then looking at my older brother going, this will not be good. I had a fist fight with our neighbors. I'm like, I, at five, my, my older brother used to bet there was a, another family in the neighborhood and they would uh, put us in this little patch of lawn and then uh, bet on who could be who. And uh, I started at five years old, that's why I was a little scrapper, right? And uh, I remember fighting this kid on a dirt road. He's older than me and stuff, and we're fighting. And my brother instilled in me, there's, you know, you don't pull here and scratch like a girl, no offense, girls. I know you're fighting in MA and all that, but, but that's just the, the generation, okay? And so, um, but if you're mad at me, please don't pull my hair and scratch. I don't know what so, um, so, uh, but he also said, you win at all costs. Like, if you're not doing something, if you're not pulling here and scratching, everything else is okay. So we're, I'm five. And he's like, the other kid's like six or seven. We're rolling around on the ground. Pretty even battle. Doing good. I'm liking it. And I don't know, for whatever reason, there was a rock that I picked it up and just whacked him on the head with it. He took off crying. And uh, I went in the house, and my brothers, you know, they're okay. What happened? As well, you know, fought Joey and all this. And, and uh, his father came over and goes, we... And he hit him on the head with the rock, and my brother's like, that true? And I'm like, yeah, you want me to win. So now, me and Joey, we we're friends. We just had a scrap. Like, we played hockey together, cut turtles together. We just, you know, little kids. And so now, the adults are arguing. They're like, all right, they're going to fight again. And me and Joey are like, they're going, like, we don't want to fight each other again. I'm like, we're okay. Like, I was going to apologize to the, you know, and so now there's a parking lot without rocks, and they're like, we're gonna put the, we'll put them over the six foot fence, down at the parking lot, and let them fight with no rocks and see who wins. And they're, they're, the adults are agreeing on it. I'm sitting there like, I just felt like that time, I just like, I wasn't afraid. I just didn't want to fight my, I get, it was just on me. He's my friend, and I felt bad about hitting with the rock. It's so, all like I wanted to shed a tear, and I'm like, if you shed a tear, you are so done, right? 
So Joey took off running one way, and I took off the other one. We didn't have to fight again for about a week, right? But so <laughs> it, the, the, the whole crying and tears thing with me, so sometimes the Holy Spirit will hit me with emotion and tears because he's like, you know, he wants to make it undeniable that it's him. So it took me, I don't know, long, uh, it took me long enough to, to get it out that my wife had time to make fun of me. So, so uh, she was quenching the spirit. So the Holy Spirit will, if you ask him to uh, help you out and give you words and speak over people, and, and he'll show you who needs what. And, um, you know, he'll help you out too, but I find while well, he's giving me words for other people, he always throws a little crumb in there for myself as well, you know? So... You know, the Holy Spirit, when you don't know how to pray, ask Him to help you pray. And if you don't speak in tongues, I really, uh, you know, it's not mandatory. Come to this church as long as you want, do whatever you want. You're welcome to come, come sometimes, come, I mean, come whenever you want, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I would love to see this church baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And during praise and worship, God will show me it's people like this. You know, not that we're not all awesome people, you know, but just ordinary people on a Sunday morning sitting in a church with guinea pigs and monkeys. Like, you don't have, it's okay to have a big fancy church. I'm not against it, but it's, you don't have to have that. Amen. You know, you just have to have the Holy Spirit. That's yes. all you need. And I know when I, uh, after I get back from Central America, God just kept giving me visions. So I'd be, you know, go to nice churches where they have nice sound and, and all that. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with it. But God just kept saying, there's a lot of energy and a lot of time, and a lot of meetings, and a lot of this, and a lot of talk that, has, that is not necessary to get to me. Like, you don't need it to get to me. You can't show me visions of just sitting on buckets, you know, like in a place like Nic Nicaragua, with, you know, rusty roofs, and the roof is dripping, and, and he would just show me. People worship me. He goes, don't you think I can worship here? Mm. Like, you don't have to have mm. all the time-consuming things that go into running a service. You know, we last night, every Saturday night, Robin, my sister and Robin, Brendan, myself come over, uh, you know, vacuum the floor, bring out the seats, get it set. Takes us, I don't know, three of us, 30 minutes or something to set up. But we don't have a pre meeting set up. We just kind of come and fight over who's doing what, you know. And um, Robin out wrestles me for the vacuum every week, you know. <laughs> and so it, 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 it's okay. And so we just work together and get it done. But uh, <coughs> let's just say that, you know, all you need to make a church do what God wants us to do is the Holy Spirit, you know? Um, and I'll end with this, John 15, 26, this is the Amplified Version, but when the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, uh, standby comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify and bear witness about me. So that is so crucial. When the, the comforter, uh, the advocate, the intercessor, the counsel, the stranger, uh, he's on standby waiting to jump into action. Um, he comes, he'll testify. So when you struggle, and I don't know about you, but I've, I've struggled. It hasn't been a big struggle, but I have a question. God, are you sure Jesus is the only way? Because I meet some nice people that don't believe me, and I, I think they should go to heaven. And God you know, always uses scripture to testify uh, about yes, you know, uh, he shows me I'm the only way, uh, but I've made it so obvious to everybody through my creation and through people I just that you know I am who I say I am. So uh, the, the Holy Spirit, if you're questioning your faith, you know, are you sure of God? Are you sure of heaven? Heaven's a magnificent thing. It's hard to wrap your brain around. Whenever I question anything, and I do question stuff sometimes. I never question my faith. I never. I'm not. You know, I, I know, but sometimes I, there's little details. I, sometimes I'm like that little kid that wants that little reassurance, you know? Um, I just want to know that I know that I know. And if I ever question or second guess it, uh, the Holy Spirit is there to remind us. If doubt creeps in, the Holy Spirit bears witness to show us that Jesus is real. He's, he exists and he's exactly who he says he is. Um, so we just want to keep that in mind. The Holy Spirit is not an afterthought. He's not a second-rate God. He is God. He is here. This is his time. I love when Don said that this is his time, you know. If you watch fights with Bruce Buffer, it's time, right? It's, uh, and fighters, you know, take the ring and, and, and do their thing. And it's time that, you know, us Christians stand up for the word, stand on the word, Amen. don't back down. But we don't just, you know, have talk. Paul, the Apostle Paul said, you know, the gospel is not just a lot of words, but it is 
the how is signs and wonders, right? And that is that is the ordinary Christian church should be filled. The extraordinary supernatural should be natural for the born again believer. And that's where I'll end today. And that's for our viewers. If anyone has not given your life to Jesus, uh, you cannot ex uh, get the Holy Spirit without Christ. You know, when, when they say in the scripture that not everybody will receive the Holy Spirit, can receive them. That is because if you're not a Christian, um, you have to have Jesus and the Holy Spirit, you know? So you have to if you accept the giver, if you don't accept the gift. Yes. My wife said accept the giver, giver if you're going to accept the gift. That's true. A lot of times, yeah, we don't want to get off on that path of just chasing down gifts and manifestations. We want to chase the person um, and invite him in. And then I wasn't asking him to speak a sp specific prophecy or anything. And it was, it was very powerful, you know, and very true. And I, I saw it and I received it. And that's just what he does. He just, you know, God is love. Uh, the Holy Spirit is love. And he just wants to get good things uh, to us and through us. But if you've never made the decision to give your life to Jesus, it's very simple. You just say, uh, you know, Jesus, I believe you died for my sins. I believe that you were raised by God uh, three days later. And I ask you to come into my life and let's just do life together. That's all you have to say and believe, and there you are. And if you need any help or support, you can go to uh, zoo.church. Our phone numbers are on there. Our cell phone numbers, my wife and myself, are on there. Try not to get in touch with me through Messenger. I am terrible at social media. I, I don't get it. Um, message people, I get messages on Messenger, and I, I go to the interim, and they're gone. Um, I, don't, I, I don't do it. It's, it. It could be my phone. It's probably me. Um, so if you can... Use error. Use error, okay. If you can call me um, or email, that I, will, I can handle that. The or message, text message. Text message, but all the other stuff on, you know, um, I, uh, I'm probably going to mess it up. And I have not asked the Holy Spirit to teach me that. So uh, I'm probably not going to learn it. Just text, call, email. I think that's enough ways to get hold of somebody. And we'll help you, we'll support you. Uh, we have also been setting up a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, um, you know, for coffee and things. So if you want to, you know, don't want us to pray for you here or you have stuff on your mind, just call. And either Brenda or myself or both of us will meet you uh, for lunch and um, we'll even buy you lunch and um, or breakfast or coffee or whatever and just uh, hang out and talk. It's just very, you know, help each other out. You know, I had a meeting with someone on Thursday, a two-hour one-on-one. They, they needed some assistance and, you know, I felt... They are leaving refreshed. Like I was able to help, and I also feel the time and stuff he spoke to me is also a blessing to me. So it's a, it's a two-way thing. Um, so we're happy to do that. Uh, I always forget this. I, always, I told myself I was not going to forget it today. Um, offerings. If you'd like to give, it is a biblical thing to give. But God says when you give, uh, He blesses you. Um, Jesus says it's the least important thing. The thing that you don't ever want to do, don't give if you don't want to. Now, at some point, you should want to. You should learn the love of Christ. But God likes the cheerful giver. Don't ever give out of guilt. If I come up in, I guilt you into giving. That's wrong on my part and bad on your part to give, right? Um, so let's not both be wrong. But if you feel like, hey, I feel like I want to give. A friend and myself, we give a lot um, in, in every season of our life. And it's just because we have joy in God tells us to. We just gave to a ministry. The church was a, a, a big part of that. Uh, for a uh, specific thing because God told me to. And I don't go, well, God, you know, what about the bank account? I just go, I'm just obedient. Amen. And so if he tells you to give, give. We do good things with the money. People know. What, uh, we try to bless our local community. We find people that need a hand. You know, bills being paid. Whatever it is, we try to just make it very, um, you know, we just try to make it very real and, and, and just use the money correctly. And um, if you ever have questions where the money goes, we'll be happy to show you. We're very transparent. I talk too much to have any secrets. That's what I've realized. So, um, yeah, it, it, is, it is what it is. But we do good things with the money, and God will bless it back to you. So uh, thanks a lot. Have a great week. And uh, Jesus loves you. Right? You too. Amen.